Yo, what's up everybody? This is Junior Chicken here with another Poke Vlog. I've gotten 50 hours and 28 minutes into Pokemon Platinum. I'm pretty excited to tell you what I've gotten so far. While still training Elecat and Leafeon to get a decent level, I was able to catch myself a Houndor and I named it Heldog. Then, as soon as I went to the Pastoria City Gym, I had to face Matt B again. Once again, I was able to beat him, and he said that he became, like, I don't know, Crusher Wake's minion? Yeah, it's like, oh, Crusher Wake's my master, or something like that. Like, what the hell? The Pastoria City Gym was actually a pretty reminiscent puzzle of the Water Temple. There was, like, a water level and you had to uh, set the water level to uh, get it to two different places within the gym and there'd also be these logs that would float up and down depending on the uh, water level and it was a pretty cool puzzle to figure out how to get to Crash Awake himself and of course I have faced the trainers and beat them and yeah Crash Awake was okay. His uh, Floatzill was actually the challenging one since it learned Ice Fang, which actually took out Bokeh when I sent Bokeh out to face Floatzill. Thankfully, Leafeon was able to finish up and beat Crash Awake for me. I'm now able to use Surf outside of battle, and I also got the HM for Brine. Once I left the Pastoria City Gym, Apparently, someone set off a bomb in the Great Marsh building, Crasher Wake went to deal with it himself, and Matt B told me to go after the grunt who did it. It was kind of stupid. Basically, he'd stop, I'd go up to him, and then he'd run off on me. Eventually, I ended up facing him, and I beat his Krogunk thanks to its dry skin ability. Then, I got to meet up with my girl Cynthia again, and she gave me some secret potion so that I could get rid of those Psyducks that were blocking my way in Route 209. Or was it 210? I actually learned something. You actually have to walk through the very tall grass. You can't go through there with your bicycle. So I kind of backtracked a little bit and went through the tall grass areas at the beginning of Route 210 that I missed before. I also faced a bunch of trainers while on Route 210 going to Celestic Town. And while I was fighting the trainers, this happened. Wait a minute. Fiery Kong. You used to be a Monferno. Sweet. Yes. Now you're an Inferno. Yeah. And just as Fiery Kong had learned Mach Punch, POW! A fighting move when it evolved into Monferno, it got to learn another fighting move when evolving into Infernape. Close combat. <laughs> Once I reached Celestic Town, I faced another Team Galactic Grunt, and I went into the ruins after I beat him. The two kind of drawings that were beside the entrance were obviously of Dialga and Palkia. I got to talk to Cynthia's grandmother, I believe, and then I got to face Cyrus, the very leader of Team Galactic himself. But I was able to pull through thanks to my awesome team. And then that's where I obtained the Surf HM. Once I got the Surf HM, I talked to Bucktooth, I could pretty much go to all the watery places I couldn't before. I also swapped out Elecat, Bokeh, and Leafeon for Gitzloth, Champion, and Killer Frog. Now I have an all fighting team to face the Kanalav Gym Leader. That may have been a mistake, however, because while surfing, I ran into a lot of tentacles. And I realized that Killer Frog is a bit weak. I mean, Getzloff is Glade, which is at third, and Champion is Machoke, second stage, but Killer Frog is only a Krogunt now. 
it had to wait until 37 to reach his final stage, Toxicro. I did catch a tentacool, but I didn't know what nickname to give it, so I just left it as is. Thankfully, if Killer Frog ended up fainting due to a tentacool, I did have Gitzloth, who learned Seiko Cut, so he could actually take down a tentacool if I needed him to. I was also able to get Champion to learn Submission, a more powerful move to replace Karate Chop. <coughs> Killer Frog had already learned Revenge <coughs> and Fain Attack. But along the way, he got to learn Sucker Punch and Mud Bomb, which made fights with tentacles a bit easier. Thankfully, the surfing did pay off as I got a bunch of items that may come handy later on. I got to access some pretty exclusive areas. I was able to go to the Fugo Ironworks, where I can exchange star pieces for four shards, one for each color. I was also able to go into the Floraroma Meadows and collect some pretty good items there. And basically I was able to access items that I wasn't able to before. I was able to find a Razor Fang along the way, and I gave it to my Scorebat so it could evolve into Gliscore. And right away I took it to the Mover Learner and gave him two heart skills to learn Thunder Fang and Fire Fang thus already taking care of his weaknesses of water and ice. Eventually I went to Candlelave City, and I got to face Matt V again, and I came through victorious, but then I got to go to the Iron Island. At first, I stocked up on revives because there wasn't going to be a Pokemon Center there, and man were the battles annoying there. You'd get Gravelers all over the place that would use self-destruct right off the bat, killing off your Pokemon. Oh. Annoying. But thankfully, I was able to run to a buddy, Riley, and we fought Pokemon trainers and wild Pokemon together. And for some reason, he could pretty much heal my Pokemon whenever the battle was done. Not just HP-wise, but PP-wise which was thankfully very helpful. Riley also was fighting with his Lucario that stayed at level 41 despite how much my Pokemon evolved. And thanks to an experience share that I gave to Killer Frog, it eventually evolved into Toxicroak. Eventually, me and Riley ended up facing two Team Galactic Grunts. And of course, once again, we kicked their asses. Once we got to the end of our journey, he offered to give me an egg. But, I had to go back to the Pokemon Center in Kanalav City so that I could have an open slot to have the egg. And it was a good decision, I'll tell you that. At the end of the tunnels within Iron Island, I found a shiny stone. I immediately gave it to Cheer Egg so it evolved into Togekiss. Then I used two heart scales to teach Cheer Egg Aura Sphere. and Air Slash. Now, it's pretty badass and can take on most of his weaknesses. Then I remembered, I forgot one fighting Pokemon to put on my team. Blue Beetle! You know, the Heracross I caught, which took so long because I needed to get him through putting honey on trees, I end up running into these f***ing Burmies who suck ass. Well, I gradually trained it. No experience share or anything. So I trained Blue Beetle myself from the beginning. I pretty much took him down all the paths, starting from Twin Leaf City, all the way up to about, well, Vileston City, where I am now. First, he learned Horn Attack and Fury Attack, which were pretty good, but then he learned Aerial Ace, and he was easily able to take out Bug and Grass types on Route 205. And then, he got to learn Brick Break. Yeah! thus getting his first stab bonus. And then he learned counter. So if a Staravia or a Zubat tried to use a wing attack against him, he could come back and kill him instantly. All the while I was training Blue Beetle, I was able to catch a Duskull and name it Hellspawn. And I was able to catch a Marill and name it Aquacute. 
And I was just waiting for that egg that Riley gave me to hatch, because I knew what it would become. And I was so right. This was the Pokemon that was in the egg. It's Riolu! Yeah! Yeah. So far, that's a pretty amazing journey. Now for TMs, I got Water Pulse, Giga Drain, Iron Tail, Thunderbolt, Dig, Shadow Ball, Flamethrower, Aerial Ace, Skill Swap, Psych Up, X Scissor, U Turn, on top of the ones that I mentioned before. Right now, I'm in Vastone City. I can pretty much fly to Candelave City anytime I want, and my team is on top of its game. I got Blue Beetle at level 27. I got my HM Slave Bucktooth at level 31. I got Champion at level 35. I got Confidence at level 43. Aura Man, which is the Riolu I caught, is still at level 1, but I promise you, I'm going to treat this with gold. I'm, I gave him a suit belt. I'm going to give him massages just every day until it evolves into Lucario. And Fiery Kong's at level 45. That's all I got to say for this Poké Vlog. I'm getting really excited to see what happens at the end of this game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Ow! <laughs> I got nailed in the sack. Ah! Oh.